Right, so we're at the, the Rhododendron Gardens in Blackheath, the Campbell Rhododendron Gardens. And this is the height of the rhododendron season, where a large majority of the rhododendrons are at their peak. Some have um, already finished, and some are yet to come out. But interspersed amongst the rhododendrons, there's also azaleas and waratahs. So we're just going to take a walk through the garden and have a look at some of the beautiful, beautiful flowers that are in bloom right now. And we're doing this recording uh, because the live stream that I attempted to do here failed abysmally. The signal was very poor in this part of Blackheath, um, possibly because of the high winds today, but in any case it was unfortunately a, a, a disappointment. So I'm doing the recording which I will get to those who were on my tour and and put up with a lot of uh, disconnections and uh, various other related issues to do with the poor signal. Alright so over here we have the Dick Harris Lookout which was opened officially by Graham Ross the gardening guru on the 27th of September 2014. Graham Ross I would be familiar with anyone who watches a lot of the gardening shows on uh, Australian television and he also has a radio program on weekends. So this lookout is perched above the valley below and it also says that it's in recognition of Ib Sorensen whose foresight in 1968 initiated the idea for these gardens and who was ably supported by members of the Blue Mountains nursery industry. And from this viewpoint, you can see out over a vast majority of the property. And you get a sense of all the color in front of us. I'm standing at this point, overlooking the grounds below. And over here we have the lake and then beyond the lake there's a, a short walk that heads out into the forest along a path that's been planted with um, a wide variety of uh, rhododendron species, or varietals I think you call them. And you can see that there's lots of um, nesting boxes here on the trees as well. Alright so let's head out along the path and let's see what we can see. So I showed you a moment ago the beautiful Waratah. We're going to see more of those. And last time I took the upper path, I think I'll take this path this time. Here's some more of the Waratahs on our right. Looking just beautiful. So many Waratahs this season. And of course it's uh, the state flower for New South Wales. And it's an absolutely stunning flower. The rhododendrons here on my left are a lovely pink on the outside with a very dark centre. They just look beautiful. Here's a gorgeous little waratah. A single bloom on a small plant that I can get really close to. So interspersed amongst the showy azaleas and waratahs and rhododendrons we have natives like this banksia. 
This is called the zigzag path. I don't see any new young flowers on this banks here, just the older seed heads like this one here. And of course this path is lined with what looks to me like an azalea. Yes, this one's called the Azalea Princess Maud. And of course, when you go down, you always have to come back up again. So it's nice to see that there are seats along the way for anyone who might need to take a bit of a rest on their way back up the path. Look at the combination of the bright pink and the bright yellow here. Oh, this one's going to be impressive in about what do you think about a week about a week from now look at that it's just covered in buds that haven't opened yet so the path is really narrow at this point you've got azalea bushes almost over your head for the entire length another one of these lovely yellow ones. Such a pretty colour. Right, so um, we turn left first of all. see the uh, beginning of a stream that flows down through this little valley. At this point here, just got some gorgeous red and white with the lovely pink behind it. shooting up through the middle of these beautiful, beautiful tall gum trees. From this point we see that there's a number of crossings for the little stream. So this is where the stream comes from, flowing down into a pond. And then continuing on through, winding its way through ferns. Where it flows into the lake just a little further on. <clears throat> Beautiful, really beautiful here. So we're going to head down towards those red azaleas down next to the lake and cross over a little bridge. Here's some more of these yellow ones in between the two pinks. a little maple down by the edge of the lake here. So we have the stone bridge. Apparently it's the most photographed part of the park. And it's called the Bob McCullough Bridge, built here in January 1974. So from the top of this bridge you can see where that little stream flows into this sort of wetland area. There are ferns over here, there's a path that leads out between more rhododendrons up the hillside over that side and then over here 
we have the pond and that wonderful reflection. If you go around this side here towards where the seat is, we'll be able to look back on the bridge. There we go, that's a pretty spot. That's a pretty shot. And there's a little sign on this chair that says Winifred Francis Hartwell loved these gardens and Bob's Bridge. All right, let's go over to the other side of the lake. These red ones look amazing with the sun shining through. And there's that bridge again. So when we cross the, what's it, in effect a dam wall, over the other side, there's a little lookout post over the other side there. Lookout point. And on the lower side of the dam wall is a, another pond and a bridge and a picnic area, there's picnic seats down there. quite pretty that reflection there so we can cross this bridge there's the running stream I spotted a spine bill, but it's too too small. Ones up the hill. Yeah, those tiny little spine bill bird flitting around in this tree here. Oh, yeah. Do you see it right yeah. up the top there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, there was a tiny little bird, little spinebill, flitting around in that rhododendron there. But he's too quick, I couldn't photograph him. And up there is where that um, viewing platform is. 
that we were standing on earlier.